Hi there, and welcome again to the Spacey Gracie Review. I'm Grayson, and I'd like for you to note Dan particularly flowers on the set, and sorry for the handheld microphone. I know it's a little bit ugly. However, I'm having audio issues in that every time I open a lavalier microphone package, I either lose the lav or I destroy it, so I'm stuck with the handheld mic here just so Steve won't give me hell about audio. I'm going to use it. Oh, the things I do to please men. <laughs> Boy, story of my life. Anyway, let's move right along to our topic for the day, which is networking. And to do, since it is Lent, and that's a time when we Episcopalians feel particularly religious, uh, no other time of the year, that's for sure, I've decided to do great penance during Lent and punish myself severely, not with rusty chains and whips, but by reading a stack of social media nonfiction I started with. Glenn Reynolds' Army of David, Army of Davids, Whew. then We the Media by Dan Gilmore, particularly a snoozer. Some of these people are just not writers. <laughs> they might be great on the nonfiction and in the blogosphere, but Lordy mercy, don't have them write a book. Anyway, then there's The Long Tail, which I'm sure you've all heard about. There'll probably be a movie out about that. That's probably one of the most famous magazine articles ever written. Uh, somebody told uh, Chris Anderson to write a book about it, turn it into a book, and and he took them seriously and did so. And you got I don't know how to get that got in there. Oh, anyway, my favorite social media book so far during this time of Lent and deep reflection and contemplation is The Wealth of Networks by a Yale law professor. And this would just crack me up. This is a funny book because you're reading along all about social media, this and the power and the beauty. And the la dee da about creating networks. And then we get to the part where he decides to solve our southern culture issues. And says that essentially any negative or racist elements in southern culture and stereotypes that might be a bit plastic and ones that might actually be true have somehow all been eradicated by social media. This I found to be just hilariously funny. Obviously, the dude has not spent a whole lot of time down south. I don't know how he possibly thinks those old southern networks are just poof, gone away because of new ways of creating networks. Um, they might exist side by side, but never underestimate the power of the old south network. Certainly got us into enough trouble about 100 years ago. Anyway, let's talk a little bit more about social networking. Um, you hear a lot these days about bloggers and how bloggers are creating, just wreaking havoc and creating trouble everywhere they go. Some companies have gone so far to said they will not hire any bloggers. The Edwards campaign, of course, had some issues with some of their bloggers. However, I, if I was hiring nowadays, if I was a business or a corporation, which of course I am, but... If I was hiring, why would you hire anybody who wasn't blogging? I, I can't for the life of me figure out why people do not want to hire bloggers. Because if you hire just a lone person, for instance, to do a certain position in your company it, that doesn't blog, for instance, or who doesn't blog, you're hiring merely an individual. And what can they bring to the table? whoop de woo their background and their skills. However, if you hire someone who's blogging, you not only hire them and their background and their skills and their education, but you also hire their social network along with them and their understanding and their knowledge and what they have created in terms of a social network. So I can't imagine hiring anybody who didn't blog because you're sure getting a lot more bang for your buck if you hire a blogger. And I would also ask some key questions. Not only do you have a blog, what blogs are you reading? Are they blogs related to our industry, the industry you're being hired into? And also, do you comment on blogs? And if so, well, I would certainly expect them to comment, and I would allow them time to comment on various blogs. And I would, because if you don't comment as a blogger, you're only eating half of the pizza. Um, it's just like swimming in the shallow end and never going off the deep end onto the diving board if you don't comment on other people's blogs. Having a blog, writing on your blog, contributing to your blog is one thing, marketing that blog. You also need to be participating in the blogosphere by commenting on other people's blogs. Hint, hint. So I certainly hope to see a lot more of you out there doing that on the Spacey Gracie Review and on other blogs as well in the future. That's all for social networking today. 
Thanks for tuning in and I'll talk to you later on.